In this video, I'd like to show you how to create a Postgres table populated with some data and query that data from the table. So let's get started. Here's a list of commands that I'm going to be using in this video, and I will include it in the notes for this video when we're done. All right, I'm going to use a computer up in the cloud for this, although any computer that's running Docker, you can do the exact same commands within it. So first off, I'm going to open up this development computer. I'm going to close this. And I'm primarily going to be interacting with the computer through this terminal window. All right, so here's my first command. Actually, I'll just put it up in a little tab right here. And let's, it's, I'm afraid that it's going to do a word wrap. This is actually all on one line, so be very careful about that. There we go. What this does is it pulls down a little MIDI computer that runs the latest version of the Postgres database. Um, this is a nice way of doing things because it doesn't install anything um, on your local computer. Uh, the command that I created that you just typed in, what it does is it uses a little local folder or a local file for storing the database information, but the actual computer that's running the latest Docker or the latest uh, Postgres server software is not permanently download downloaded to your computer. So it's kind of a neat little thing. Okay, um, next thing we're going to do now that we're running, um, now this is an interesting way to do things. Oftentimes when we run a Docker command, we have our little terminal command prompt here change and this time it did not. It ran the command and we're still effectively working on the local computer. Um, the reason for that is because the, the database was started in such a way that it's running in the background and I could confirm that by running this command docker ps or docker process and there is basically a Docker container with Postgres in there and we named it Donut DB for Donut Database because um, why not donuts, right? So it's running in the background. Now we need to be able to interact with it. Uh, so how do we do that? The command is docker exec. So think about this as a little Linux computer that's running in the background and we need to connect to it. So docker exec terminal Donut DB bash. So we type in that command. And now we are attached to that running Linux server in the background that is running the latest version of Postgres. All right, now let's start interacting with Postgres. PSQL user Postgres. Now we have logged into the Postgres database program that's running in the background and we can start uh, issuing commands against that database. So let us first create a database. We will call it uh, Paradise Donut Database, uh, so, or DB for short. So I'll write the command create database Paradise Donut DB, done, and with a semicolon. It has been created. Now, right now we're interacting with the Postgres database, which exists by default. Right now we need to change so that our commands will start being executed against the Paradise Donut DB database that we just created. So we do this backslash C for change database, Paradise Donut DB. I just started typing it and hit tab, by the way. I actually don't type that fast, and it figured it out for me. Perfect. Okay, so um, I'm now working with the Paradise Donut database, and I would like to create a table in there. I will create a, ta a simple table of employees. Now, learning all of SQL is beyond the scope of this um, video, but here is a block of code that creates some fields of type integer as well as some fields of type text. So I'm grabbing those coming over to here, pasting it in, and 
I think it all worked. It said create table just like it said create database. So it's looking good. Um, let's go ahead and now add a record to this table. So I'll come over here and this is the SQL syntax for inserting a record. So I say insert and this does not look like an error message. So we're going to assume that everything went well. So let's go ahead and query the database table that we just created and added data to. Select st uh, star from and then the table was called employee. We hit return and there it is. So if I did the insert command a bunch of times just copying and pasting um, this line but changing the, the values there then when I do the select command I would see lots and lots of different rows. Okay so the good news is all of this data that was being created and the table and the database are being stored in this local folder. So if I'm done working with my database for the day, uh, what I could do is I could say um, backslash Q to get out of this database. And if I want to get out of the little Linux computer that's running my database, I could type in exit. And technically, it's still running in the background. Um, so that concludes this video. I hope it's helpful to you uh, as you look forward to developing and things like Django using a database like this. Um, what you'll be able to do is, uh, as you follow my series of videos, you'll be able to start up a database in the background and then have your Django application talk with that database that's running in the background.